in marriage, right? Bruce. Mm -hmm. Hebrews. Oh. No. Oh, wow. okay, that's, that was my big team joke. Okay. Hebrews chapter 10. Now we, you know, we have a good time. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Amen. Merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Amen. There's no way to try to be irreverent to the word of God. Amen. I'm glad that we can come to the house of the Lord and experience joy. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that. In Hebrews chapter 10, we're going to begin reading in verse 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Ooh, thank you, want Jesus. To, amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We want to use this this afternoon with God's help. We want to preach on a message entitled, A Change of Heart. Amen. Thank God we can have a change of heart. Yes. Yes. Amen. So let's look to the Lord. We'll ask his blessings today. Reverend Coker, sir, we Wonderful, Father, we thank you for this time of worship for each one that's here, Father. We ask you to let a fresh unction rest upon Pastor Polk. God, speak to hearts, meet needs, a heal and, and deliver, Lord. And we just give you the praise and the thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank God. God is a healer. Amen. 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 Absolutely heals all of our diseases. Yes. We can heal our hearts too, amen? amen. We can change them if we will open them to Him. So we read this afternoon out of Hebrews chapter 10, a quotation from Jeremiah chapter 31, uh, verse 33 through 34. That's where it's quoted from. The writer in this book, in the book of Hebrews, who was the Apostle Paul. Began to teach here in this book of Hebrews. We gave you a short summary of it, well, maybe a week ago or so. Told you that if you want to know what the book of Hebrews is about, it's two words that you can remember more and better. Yeah. Okay? All right. So he teaches in this book of Hebrews that Jesus' ministry is more and better than the ministry that was given under the law to the nation of Israel. Matter of fact, if we know what the Bible teaches, we see what the Bible teaches, we know that Jesus fulfilled the law, okay? that it has been fulfilled in him. Yes. And the Lord said in Jeremiah, we read it to you, that he would make, we go back a couple of verses there in Jeremiah, okay, uh, about to verse 31. He said that he would make a new covenant, okay, not according to the old covenant that he had made, with them when they came out of Jesus or Egypt, excuse me, but he would make a new covenant with them and we read it to you out of uh, chapter 10 of Hebrews, verse 16 and 17, that in this new covenant he wasn't going to write the laws on tables of stone as he had in the old covenant, but he was going to write them on their hearts. Thank God that God does that. You know, God puts it within you and I yes. okay, to follow him and to obey him. Amen. And that's, that's the hope that we have, brother and sister. It's not you and I just doing a bunch of do's and don'ts on our own self-discipline, self-will. No, we do need to have that as a Christian. The word disciple comes from discipline. We need, we need to have discipline. Okay, but it's not just our own self-discipline and our own self-will, brother and sister. It is God working in you and I. Yeah. And God putting it within us to obey the word of Almighty God. We have learned in our Bible study about the circumcising of the heart. You remember that? Okay, from chapter chapter 2, the end of chapter 2, I believe there, beginning in verse 28. We learned in our Bible study that for he is not a Jew which is one inward, outwardly, excuse me. Neither is that circumcision which is the outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart 
in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. So what was he saying then? God wasn't looking for some outward fleshly ordinance to make them right, but God wanted to circumcise not only their hearts, but anyone's heart. Yeah. Okay? God wants to cut away the sin. Yeah. God wants to cut away the rebellion. Yeah. God wants to cut yeah. away the self-will. And brother and sister, God wants to give us a new heart yeah. that wants to obey the Lord. We could go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and the Apostle Paul writing here also, writing to the church at Corinth, and he told them that this that the church, not just them, but really the, the whole the church, the body of Christ, is a letter or it is an epistle, okay, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the one that is writing in our hearts, brother and sister. He said there. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 3, For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. No, it's no longer, and it's not Moses coming down from the mountain with some stone tablets, but it's Jesus himself. Amen. Writing his word and his commandment Amen. in our hearts. Brother sister, we are the epistles of the Lord. We are letters from God. Amen. The apostle Peter okay, wrote about God's plan for man also. You know, we're learning a lot about God's plan for man in our Bible study today of Romans. Okay, we, we again want to encourage you to come. Some basic building blocks and foundation uh, of Christianity. Okay, is shared, very, very important, very uh, helpful to help us to understand what God is doing. And it's, not, it's not some haphazard plan. No, it's not right. Right. It wasn't that man sinned in the garden and God said, oops, what do I do now? That's right. God has had a plan. Jesus is the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation yes. of the world. Yes. Okay? Yes. It's a plan that God has. God is accomplishing his, path, his plan. Peter wrote about the plan of God, and he wrote there in, in 2 Peter chapter 3, okay, that how God will keep the promises that he has made in his work. He said that God is not slack concerning his promises. God wants people to have the opportunity to repent, to have a change of heart where God is concerned. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, because just like today, people in Peter's time, they would mock, well, where is the promise of his coming? All things are continuing as they have from the beginning of the world. Okay, and Peter said, as we read to you, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but he is long-suffering toward us were. Oh, thank God that God is long-suffering to us were. You know what that means? God is gracious. God is merciful. God has and does has put up with a lot from mankind. Why? Because he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Do we understand that God wants everyone to come to that change, to come to a place, brother and sister, where they no longer fight against God, but where they will accept and receive the mercy of Almighty God. Amen. We see in these portions of Scripture that God wants to change the hearts of mankind. Why? You know, we preach the Bible. We teach the Bible. You've come here any amount of time. You've, you've seen that. Okay? We, we endeavor to tell you the whole counsel of God. That's why we share things that we share. It's not that we're mean. We don't try to be mean to people. Okay, but people need to know the truth. Yes. You know, if there yes. was if there was a, a, a bridge out and maybe somebody was driving at night and during a monsoon and it was raining really hard and they couldn't see and they didn't know that the bridge got washed out okay, by the torrents of water that were coming by and you did and you stopped your car and put your flashers on and you got out of your car and you were waving your hands and yelling at them, stop, stop! 
They might look at you and say, well, that guy's crazy. He's mean. But if they kept you from going off into that water and drowning, you would be thankful. Yes. No, they're not being mean. They're trying to warn people okay, that there is danger ahead. But brother and sister, thank God for people who care enough to warn us when there's danger ahead. God cares enough, brother and sister, to let us know. Okay, to let us know when there is danger ahead. Thank God. Why does God want the hearts of men and women changed? Jeremiah chapter 17, beginning in verse 9. Okay, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. As we're learning in Romans, I keep referencing that, okay? Uh, it's important. Romans chapter 3, verse 23, all have sinned, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, whereas by one man sin, uh, sin entered into the present, excuse me, wherefore, wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death, death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. We know, brothers and sisters, that death, that sin is passed upon all men. We see it because all have sinned and consequently death. But thank God, brother and sister, we know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we have a responsibility. To tell people the truth. Okay, the Bible teaches us. We're talking about the heart and the condition of our heart. The Bible plainly teaches us. Jesus taught us that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Okay, whatever's on the inside is going to come out. Okay, well, if what is coming out is not right, brother and sister, we let's not get mad because uh, 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 it's pointed out that something may not be right. Let's be thankful that God cares enough yes. to have it pointed out. Yes. And let's take the opportunity that God is giving us yes. to make it right. Yes. You know, we're taught even in the book of Proverbs that we are to keep our heart with what? With all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. We are to give effort for it, brother and sister, to keep our hearts right. You know what the work of a Christian is? I know we're saved by grace through faith. It's not a works. Okay, let's any man should boast. <laughs> Brother, sister, but the work of a Christian, any Christian, me, you, anyone else who is a believer, is for us to, to keep our hearts right with God and to continue in faith. The Apostle Paul said of himself, he said, I have fought a good fight. Okay? He fought a good fight. He fought a, a good fight of faith, brother and sister. He kept the faith. There are many things that come along and try to steal our faith. Brother and sister, there are things that come along and try to steal and take away what God has done in our lives. But we thank God with God's help, yes. with God in our hearts and in our lives. Yes. We can keep our priorities right. Yes. We can keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen. Because he is that author and that finisher of our faith. We're going to look at a couple of examples today. Okay, first of all, we're talking a lot about the Apostle Paul. Okay, uh, he wrote or he shared that verse of scripture out of Jeremiah there in Hebrews chapter 10. Let's talk about him. We have an example in his life. We know before he was known as Paul, he was known as Saul of Tarsus, a very religious Jewish man concerning the Jewish law. He said that he was faultless. It didn't mean that the man didn't commit any sin. He is the one that wrote what we read out of Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 and Romans chapter 5 and verse 12 that all have sinned. That included himself. But what it meant was that when he did sin, he went according to the law and kept the appropriate sacrifices to make things right with God. Okay? So he obeyed the law. He was very, he was very learned in the law that was given to the Jewish people through Moses, okay? He, he knew all about this, brother and sister. And though he was very religious and he sincerely thought that he was serving 
God correctly, though he thought he was right, brother and sister, he found out he was wrong. Amen. So what do we do when we find out we're wrong? Do we get mad? Okay, no, let's not do that. Who the Lord loves, he chastens. Okay? Amen. He chastens, brother and sister, every every son that he receives. He, he scourges us, he chastens us. He does it for our good. We can relate to that. People that are parents can relate to that. Mm -hmm. You have children. Okay, the Bible tells us not to spare the rod. You correct them when they're wrong because you love them. That's okay, right. I'm thankful that I had a dad that was a strong dis disciplinarian. And, and it taught us from an early age that there are consequences to your decisions. That's right. Okay, life is not just all fun and games. And you don't just get, get to do whatever and whatever you want to do. Okay. You you do what you do, but you're gonna you're gonna have consequences for what you do. That's right. Okay? Thank God for that. Well, God is not less of a father than an earthly father. He's a better father. And because he loves us, he lets us know when we're wrong, not because he's trying to be mean, but because he wants to give us the opportunity to change. To have a change of heart. Well, let's talk about this man Saul. Okay, he was very religious. He thought he was doing right, brother and sister, but and on the contrary, he was fighting against God. He was even persecuting Christians. We can read about him being involved in the murder of Stephen, okay, in the book of Acts chapter 7, but God did not leave him in that condition, okay? Yes. God didn't leave him there. Brother and sister, God made a way for him, and we can read about it in the book of Acts Chapter 9, where he came by his life, he began to deal with this man's heart. And he told him, why persecutest thou me? It's hard for you to kick against the prince. God began to let him know, I am the one that is dealing with your heart. I'm trying to get you to go in the right direction. Don't fight against me. Amen. Amen. What did Paul do? Saul of Tarsus, Paul, later on, what did he do? Did he get mad? God, you're mean. God, you know, I'm trying my best. Don't tell me anything. That's not what he did. Brother and sister, he said, Lord, what will you have me to do? He submitted himself to the will of God for his life. Brother and sister, we, thank God, we can have that same attitude. And we can humble ourselves. And we can say, God, what do you want me to do? You know, the Bible teaches us. That we are to acknowledge God in what? All of our ways. And he is the one, brother and sister, that will direct our paths. He is the one, brother and sister, that will help you and I to go in the right direction. Lord, what will you have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Because of his faith, because he was willing to humble himself, and follow what the Lord asked him to do. Not only were his eyes opened, not only was his heart changed, he was filled with the Holy Ghost, brother and sister. He became a great man of God, and he was used of God. God changed him from one that fought against God to one that promoted the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at the life-changing power of the Lord. We have another example I'm going to talk about this, this afternoon. And I'm not too far from being close, Sister Pope, if you want to come get ready. and, and uh, we, we also have an account, Brother Sister, about the prodigal son. We know, we know about the prodigal son. We've heard a lot about him. You know, there's there's uh, so much that is said and, and preached about him. Brother Sister, he was there. and he, We know that he took the inheritance, part of the inheritance that belonged to him, and he went out and he blew it on riotous living, not... Not good living, not righteous living, but <laughs> riotous living. Okay? He was out partying it up. Okay? And you know, when you have money, you got friends. That's right. But you know what? We see in that Bible setting that when the money was gone, the Bible said there was no man that would help him. The friends were, so called friends were gone. Okay? Thank God for real friends. Amen. Thank God for people that love us. Amen. 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 And they're there, they're like Jesus. They're not fair weathered friends. Okay, their friends that are there, whether we're up or whether we're down. Okay, well, this man found himself down. He blew all the money, and he was 
he, he got him a job working, uh, feeding swine. He, he was so hungry that he would have eaten the food that he was feeding the swine. And it was in this condition that this man had a change of heart. There's something that he understood about his father. He had faith in the love of his father. Amen. He knew, Amen. though I am messed up, though I made the wrong choice and got away from my father, my father is a good man. Yes. My father loves me. Yes. Okay? My father will receive me back. Now, he was wrong in this point. He said, I'll be like one of the hired servants. And yeah, that's not the way that it was. When this man had a change of heart and he began to make his way back, to his father, the Bible teaches us that his father saw him afar off. Come on now. Amen. My Bible teaches me that Jesus would draw nigh to them that draw nigh to him. Amen. That father right out there and met that boy. Yes. Amen. God will meet you. Yes. We start making a move toward God. God will make a move toward us, brother and sister. Amen. There's rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repents. More than 99 just that don't need no repentance. Well, he made his way back and he got there and he said to his father, he was willing to confess that he was wrong. That's all that God is looking for. A contrite and a broken heart, brother and sister, a broken spirit. He will not despise. That's what God is looking for. This young man was willing to humble himself and admit that he was wrong. He had a change of heart, okay? And he was received with open arms. He was restored greater than he imagined. Right. Isn't our God able to do exceeding above and above all that we ask or think? Amen. According to the power that works Amen. in you and I, God can do more than we can even imagine. Amen. Praise God. There's so much more to this. Thank God for forgiveness. But oh, thank God for restoration. Amen. Thank God for God turning our lives around. Thank God for God changing us, blessing us, being with us, helping us all the way, brother and sister, all the way. Thank God we can have a change of heart. This young man was blessed. No, God will do this for anyone. He'll do it for anyone. Amen. And if he's done it in our lives, we have so much today just to thank him for. Yes. Oh, God, thank you. You didn't leave me the way that I was. God, you didn't give me what I deserved. I needed grace and mercy, and that's what you gave me. Yes. Today, as we bow our heads and we close our eyes in reverence to the Lord, my wife begins to play and sing. We're going to spend time in prayer today. How about our hearts? Let's examine ourselves today. Whether we be in the faith. If there's any changing that needs to be done in our heart. Let's willingly allow God to help us to change. Let us pray today. God bless you as our friend.